Welcome to episode five of the all-wheel drive uh, Mustang build. It's been a little bit longer since the last video. Uh, it took a little longer than I thought to modify the bell housing. And uh, that's all I really got done since the last uh, episode was get the bell housing reclocked. I'll sh show some footage of that and show the results at the end. It was a little more work than I thought. I'll explain uh, as the video progresses. Um, but I kept on having some errors. I had to redo it a few times. Basically, um, after I remachined re it, it would, uh, and I put a dial indicator on it to check uh, concentricity to the bell housing flange, it would be off. And took a little investigation as to what was causing that. Was it the mill? Was it the um, inspection plate? Um, was it my original CMM data? Well, it turned out it was a combination of all those things and I had to really sneak up on it. When you're trying to basically get within a five thousandths or less um, position on something like this, it, every little bit counts, basically. And it took me a few weeks to figure all that out. But uh, it was successful, I'm pretty excited about it, and it totally worked, and I think it clocks the transmission correctly. The first thing I had to do was weld shut some of the existing holes and a trick to, if you're trying to weld a through hole shut, a trick you can do is basically clamp a piece of copper or brass below the hole. That way the weld won't stick to it and you can fill in the hole um, without too much effort versus trying to build it up on a, on a through hole. And that worked pretty good. As you can see, I just used a MIG welder. Um, I kind of agonized about should I TIG weld it and would it would the weld get really hard and be hard to machine? But it turned out just to be a non-issue. I'm using, I believe it's, uh, is it ER70 wire? You know, nothing special for wire. And um, it ended up being really easy to machine. Um, I did this several times as I'll explain later in the video, and every time it was pretty easy to re-drill and machine and it never got hard um, and was pretty successful. Here you can see the welds uh, before machined. I just basically filled them in and left them a little proud of the surface so I could come back and machine them flat. I wanted to increase the accuracy of the fixture so I actually Remachined it, uh, just offset it a little bit, and actually made the doubles a uh, press fit, and then proceeded to actually drill the holes and tap them for the mounting. Um, he said, all in an attempt to make this even more accurate. I was getting a little bit more uh, error in my runout um, with the test fixture than I would like, so this helped um, get rid of some of the slop. This hole here in the middle is just to help. If I were to take the fixture off again, once again I could dial in on that hole and get it centered. But to be honest, it's just as easy to dial in on one of the double pins too. As previously mentioned, there is a machined flat on the back to get it squared to the mill if I were to take it off again. So every time I cycle power to ensure accuracy, I would re uh, put a dial indicator on the right hand double pin and since I know the ideal location of that on the engine block I can basically ensure that I'm always lined up. In this case I was within a couple tenths of a thou lined up after restarting the machine and rehoming it. So that seems uh, adequate enough. Here I am uh, basically refacing off the bell housing after um, welding the hole shut. And I basically zeroed off the surface um, and then came back and cleaned it up within, you know, a thou of the surface. That really went pretty smooth in all the cases. You can see there it uh, came out pretty pretty nice. And I, had to, I did this three times. Um, as I said, it took me three times to get it right, um, mostly finding errors in my setup. Um, as I already mentioned, I had to improve my fixture plate and um, also realized that my CMM data was off. But you can see here, the weld machines quite nicely. Um, I was all concerned about it being too hard and it just was a non-issue. And I'm glad I did the, did the MIG weld versus 
TIG welding. I'm just so much faster at MIG welding, but uh, it, wor it worked out pretty well. After machining the surface flat, uh, after welding the hole shut, the next task was to basically drill and tap all of the mounting holes. Uh, this went very smooth and I only had to do it once. The tolerance required on the mounting holes is much less than the double pins, which is what I did last. So basically, I had all the coordinates uh, from my CMM report and just went around and uh, drilled them one at a time and then of course came back and tapped them. Like I said, that uh, all went very smooth. Here you can see where I welded the hole shut. In this case, I actually um, welded the old double pin hole location. And here, I've already welded in the old double pin here and then machined it flat and then welded in the double pin hole locations again um, on both sides because my first attempt at machining this had an error and so I'm doing it again here so but it ended up being pretty easy to weld them shut I just heated it up to 200 degrees F in the oven welded it and then cooled it off slow with uh, by covering it up with my gloves and it's actually pretty easy to machine sides machine flat and now I'm gonna center drill and do a pilot hole and then machine the final diameter One of the lessons I learned through all this is that when I was drilling the double pin locations, the drill was walking. And so on this last uh, attempt, which was successful, I pre-drilled the holes, as you've already seen, about 10,000 small, 10 thousandths of an inch. And then simply, since they're 3 8 holes, I simply just plunged it with a carbide 3 8 end mill, uh, which is much stiffer. And I think that it accounts for couple thou of the error I had and uh, worked out quite nicely. Um, I didn't have to ream them after or anything. The hole really cleaned up nice just plunging with the carbide end mill. This is kind of a hack but I'm simply using a big uh, drill bit to put a little chamfer on the double pin holes. Um, I didn't have a sharp uh, chamfer tools, so this worked actually out okay, even though it's kind of, kind of hackery. Here's the whole part done. Um, all the holes are moved, double pins are moved. Um, this ended up being a lot more work than I thought, but it is done. I put the uh, inspection plate on there, and I'm with basically. Um, within center, within a couple thou, as good as this milling machine could possibly do. So there were several errors that were kind of compounding that forced me to do this a couple of times and it kind of dragged out. Um, one was uh, basically my fixture plate, I already mentioned it had a couple thou of slop in it. One is the drill bits were walking, I'm convinced uh, that was a couple thou. 
There actually is a little bit of error just in that inspection plate um, too, I've determined. I put the whole thing on the car and measured it on the car too. And you get a, a similar offset, the same direction. So that's a couple thou of it, you know, which is okay. Um, but the last thing was I was basing all my coordinates on, I had uh, put the front cover of the transmission in a coordinate measuring machine and measured all the um, all the dimension because I couldn't find a drawing of the front of a T56 Magnum or a T56 front cover anywhere on the internet. My Google Foo had let me down. And so I thought, well, I'm, you know, I can just measure it. I don't need it, right? And so um, turns out there was a couple three thousandths of error in that data. Um, and that obviously was three thousandths here, three thousandths there, and pretty soon you got, you know, ten thousandths, right? So how did I fix that? Well, I finally just emailed Tremec and they were super cool and within, I don't know, half an hour, I had a detailed drawing of the front of the transmission. Why I didn't ask for that months ago, um, I don't know. So lesson learned there. And uh, thanks Tremec for being so responsive and helping me out on that. It was, uh, it was a lifesaver. All that work was done just for this. It, it, I'm hoping this is obvious, but basically now the remote shifter adapter on the top of the transmission is now horizontal or lined up with the body. You can actually see how the the C5 uh, VET tail housing now is clocked uh, even more uh, clockwise to you know to the right, I guess. And I'm going to build that into the adapter, but. This should make the sh remote shifter system line up with the car a lot better. And they said it was a lot of work to modify the bell housing, but it was the right decision. Um, and now I can move on. Well, thanks for watching this episode. Like I said it was a long haul for what I thought was going to be a simple thing, which is just remachining the bell housing to clock the uh, transmission. But I've already moved on. Uh, the next video will show. Um, making the new uh, transfer case adapter version 2. Uh, I had fully expected to make it twice, so I'm not, that was, that was the original intent. Um, the first aluminum one, I had gone through a couple 3D printed versions, obviously, and the aluminum one um, was just a mock-up. So now I'm making the real one. I've learned a lot after making the first one when it comes to getting it uh, what I want it to be and clocking the transfer case. So that'll be in the next installment, but once again, if you want to keep on seeing the updates, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.